Hi there, Mark here again. Welcome to this, which is part three of my build guide for the Tamiya Agrios on the TXT2 chassis. And uh, in part two, we got this far, which was up to step 23. Uh, so as you can see, we've got most of the chassis um, completed. Got the axles on, it's all located with the, uh, the different arms. And we've got the prop shafts connected. So it's on with step 24, which is building the shocks. And as you can see, I've got all the parts laid out. I think these are all the parts anyway. Um, so we've got to make eight shocks. Now, obviously, I'm not going to show you every single one of them because that'd be a waste of time. So I'll just get on and build the first seven. And then once I've got used to all that, I'll show you how to build up the last one. So, yeah, I'll be back in a minute. OK, then. So seven shocks later, and I've got to say, it did take me a lot longer than just a minute, as you can imagine. So that's seven done. I'll just knock up the last one. Uh, basically, get your shock body. You need BD7, which is your piston bar, and then you need to put that piston on the top, which is plastic part X9. Um, you've got the circlip on the bottom, and then just clip a circlip onto the top, or an E clip as they're called. That's that bit done. Uh, shock body, you need the O ring. I've put a bit of grease in there, like I usually do just to help seal it all up, so one o-ring in, a little bit more grease then the second o-ring then your U3 which is your bottom cap and don't tighten that all the way up yet till you've got your piston rod in which we insert now now you can do up the bottom cap ok so now to put the damper oil in and if you move the piston up and down, try and get as many of the bubbles out as you can before you fill it to the top. Then it's simply a case of getting your BD5, which is the rubber dome shaped cap. Then the shock top, obviously, just screw that on. You've got your X1, which is the bottom of the shock, with the 5mm ball end socket. And just make sure you don't use serrated pliers on this to hold that because uh, you might scratch up the actual shaft itself. Simply a case of threading on your spring and then part X5 which is the uh, spring retainer. And there's number 8 done. On to step 27 now where we're going to attach those dampers. So obviously there's two for each corner. I'm just going to show you putting the one on obviously because they're all the same and it's quite a simple, simple process. You need a 3 by 15 machine screw and a BD4 which is a kind of flanged spacer that's going to go and th through the top of the shock. So just put that in through the back side of that hole. Put your machine screw through there and then they go on to these mounts here. Uh, these plastic mounts that are on the, each of the four corners. So unusually this is a machine screw into plastic. And then exactly the same for the second shock, so put that uh, flange spacer through and your 15mm screw. Get that mounted in the other hole. And when it's done, it should look like that. Now don't go crazy tightening these screws up because the plastic is quite soft and just to finish this step we just got to pop on the bottom of the shocks onto those ball joints that are on the axle. Ok so that's the one corner done, do the other three corners exactly the same. Step 28 and uh, what we're going to do is connect all the electronics up like I've already done. I've got the uh, twin motor ESC there with the uh, four cables and I've got my receiver and I've got a 25 kilogram servo hopefully that will be enough to turn those massive great big front wheels so all we've got to do is turn it on there's a fan going there making a bit of noise and just basically fire the servo up left and right make sure that all works ok let it centre and then we can go about putting on the servo saver. And for this you'll need to open part bag E because I think the, uh, the springs are in there. So for this step and from now on we're going to use this parts bag. You're going to need 
part E2, this plastic part, and you're going to need this bag uh, for the servo side, which is I think the Q parts. Then get part Q1 or Q3, whichever fits your servo. Then you need the two kind of gold coloured springs and the one black spring. The two gold ones go in the middle. You need to just uh, squeeze that over. And that second one really is a good squeeze, I can tell you. And then the black one on the outside. Then you need part E2. 6mm ball in the one side into a captive nut on the other side, 3mm nut. And then you've got to put these two together. And with this servo in this position, you need this pointing straight up on the splines, as straight up as you can anyway. You won't get it exactly right because of uh, the way the servo centers up. And that's about as close as I'm going to get. Then you need this part Q4 and whichever screw fits your servo. So in step 29 we're going to attach the servo. Um, first off though, make up the uh, tie rod. So you need your two F9 ball ends and screw that onto the 59mm bar. Again, match it up and note the orientation of the eyes on the end to the ball ends. Then you need your four 10mm machine screws and four washers and you want to screw through into these parts here, which parts F6. Uh, note there's kind of a, an indentation on the one side and uh, not on the other so you want it this way around so that's nice and easy just screw those four in just snap on your ball end so your tie rods are on the uh, servo now then you need your under guard G1 12mm machine screw and this kind of toothed washer and the screw goes into this part here which is part F3 so it looks like we want to use this hole here, the first one and then the third one there so get this through and put the first one in you servo like this ok so it should look like this when you've done uh, I'm not going to tighten these up fully because those are quite long those slots and I think I can use that to centre up the servo uh, when it's all installed and I've got it all fired up and the electronics running so yeah that's that bit done now we're going to fix this to the uh, front of the chassis using six of the 15mm tapping screws so basically we're going to put the three screws each side in these three holes so that guard just sits in between the two of these plastic pieces Let's get a couple of screws in so get the screws in the other side then all we need to do is just attach that tie rod to that ball end there. So step 30 is making the rear under guard. So yeah, get your other guard piece which is your G1. Again, you've got to make up um, a tie rod. This time it's a smaller 45mm bar with the F9 ball joints on the end. And this time the orientation is different so you've got one ball in that way and one 90 degrees on. So yeah, match that up. You've got your silver 6mm ball end goes in that hole there. And we just need to pop that on and then fit this with the six 15mm screws to the back of the truck exactly like you did the uh, guard on the front. So that's step 31. Uh, like I said, attach that guard the same as we did the other one. So it's just those six screws, three on each side. And then, like I say, you just got to pop on that ball joint on to step 32 which is attaching this mechanism deck and for that we're going to need three 15mm screws so that's going to mount in here there's the two front mounts and the two rear mounts that goes on there so just get those screws in so that's one two three and four and what we're going to do now is just double sided tape the receiver and the ESC onto this place here. So we'll just get that done and connect all the wiring up. Okay, so that's the electronics fitted as you can see. Tidied the cabling up a little bit, tested it out and it all works fine. So that's that done. 
on to step 33 where it says attaching the battery case which is this uh, what you need to do is get part C5 you can see that in there and you just screw that on with these two 10mm screws from underneath the self tappers and then you've got these B9s which are body posts you can see they've got the, the holes in for the snap pins so you just screw those in one in each end then get your four F1 body posts and we're going to screw those on with uh, two 15mm self tappers on each one and we're going to screw this onto the chassis with 12mm long self tappers so that goes in here just get the four screws in one in each corner and then each of your body posts goes onto these brackets there's four of these brackets exactly the same um, and you need the short part pointing to the front and at the back to the back if you know what I mean so it's just a case of putting in your two 15mm screws so that's the front one fitted and the back is kind of the opposite way around so yeah just get your screws in and the same for the other side and step 34 is the wheels well wheels and tyres it's a piece of cake well it's not, it's actually two wheels it shows. You've got to make up four and all you've got to do is basically put the wheels inside the tyres. Remember the foam's already fitted, um, just a case of uh, prising them on and make sure that they're nice and seated. And it does say not to put cement on, so I'm not. And you've just got to make sure you get them the right way around. So the one tread with the wheels like this is going that way and the other one is going the other way. Okay, make two sets. Step 35 is actually fitting the wheels on and for each wheel you're going to need the adapter which is E3, uh, you're going to need your wheel nut, your flange nut and you're going to need this splined adapter, it's like a brass adapter and uh, yeah that will drive the wheel adapter. So I'll just show you one, obviously they're all the same, simply a case of getting that adapter, the splined hex, put that on, simply slip on the wheel carrier, line up those holes with the holes in the carrier and put in your wheel nut. Obviously the arrow of the tread points to the front. Do the same for the other three wheels. And to finish step 35 you just need these parts which are G5. Uh, I don't know exactly what they're for but basically they just go over the body posts onto those there and you just fit them on with a snap pin through each of the holes there's one for the front and one for the back okay so the final step of the build manual for the chassis anyway is this part C1 um, which is the battery strap so you just put that over those metal posts and you need some R clips to hold the battery in I've connected it up um, so what we'll just do now as we're right at the end is turn it on and she's fired up and We'll just test the electronics and make sure it steers right. So there's your steering. I don't think we're going to get much steering lock from that. And here she goes. Yep, let's forward. And reverse. Yep, it's all looking pretty good. There we have it. This is the Agrios chassis TXT2. And I'll tell you, it's a blooming size and it weighs a ton. Well, not really a ton, but you know what I mean. It really is heavy. And, uh, yeah, the suspension works beautifully up and down. Really impressed with that. You can see it's got plenty of travel. So I'm looking forward to getting this one out and giving it a try. So all that's left for me to say is thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this build of this fantastic monster truck. I'm really looking forward to getting it out and giving it a good bashing on the dirt see how uh, much fun we can have with it and I hope you join me on the next one where we're going to be doing the bodywork thanks again, bye